Bedtime with Mr. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of the Avengers. We can do our best to protect them. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mr. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. The light is dim in the spaceship, but you can see that you are with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Put on our mean faces. The Star-Lord, Peter Quill, Rocket, the Raccoon, and Green Gamora are all sitting in captain's chairs at the front of the ship. Four of us, sleep for the danger, awake for the money. You walk toward them to get a better view out of the windshield. As you approach, they all turn around and smile with delight when they see you. They are so happy you're here. Standing behind them, you are in awe of the full view out the windshield. You are on a spaceship that is gliding through an endless blanket of blackness dotted with stars. How does it feel to be in space? You continue to look out, trying to focus on each twinkling star, one by one. As you do, Rocket turns around in his chair and looks at you. With his pointy raccoon snout, wearing his leather tactical vest, he explains the mission that you are on. Why are we doing it? Because we're nice. Maybe whoever it is will give us a little cheddar cheese for our effort. Which isn't the point. Which isn't the point. The Guardians are on their way back down to Earth because two of the Infinity Stones and their infinite powers have been hidden around a big city full of people. The Avengers have been called to find the stones and bring them all back together. Doing this will restore the stones to their full power and protect the world from their potential use for evil. As you listen to Rocket, you hear heavy footsteps coming up behind you. You look back to see Groot. I am Groot. He walks up and extends a tree branch hand out to you with a chipper, I am Groot, to say hello. You reach your hand out to shake his. It feels rough and barky to the touch. You are excited to be here and help your new friends. There's a seat open next to Rocket, so you sit down. It is a big, comfy captain's chair that has protruding armrests lined with buttons and levers to control the ship. Looking back out the windshield, you can now see Earth in the distance. It is no bigger than a star because you are so far away. As you watch Earth slowly get bigger and bigger, you notice that each star shines brightly and appears to dim for a moment before shining bright again. Focus on this twinkling cycle that never seems to end. The stars shine, then dim, shine again, and then dim again. Let's try twinkling along with the stars. Imagine you are a star doing this same pattern, shining bright, then dimming, but with your breath. Take a deep breath in through your nose. As your chest fills with air, 
Imagine yourself shining brighter and brighter through the darkness of space. As you breathe out through your mouth, your chest empties of all the air, the shining dims for a moment, you are a twinkling star. Continue twinkling and focusing on your breath until it's time to land the ship. Earth is now in full view and you will help the Guardians land the spaceship. The familiar patterns of bright blue and green are coming more into focus as you head into the layer of clouds. Zooming straight through the puffy clouds, the spaceship is suddenly flooded with the sun's magnificent light. Gamora asked you to pull one of the levers on your chair's armrest to help land the spaceship. I'm gonna die surrounded by the biggest idiots in the galaxy. With your right hand, you slowly push a big silver button and then steadily pull the lever back towards you. Each of the guardians does the same in unison. The spaceship hovers over a big city filled with tall buildings and the people that look like ants scurrying about. The spaceship hovers lower and lower to gently land in a grassy park that is lined with trees. You feel a subtle dropping feeling in your belly as the ship settles onto land. It did it. You helped land the ship. The guardians get out of their chairs and you follow them. As you make your way out, Peter high fives you for a job well done. He is grateful for your help. You are a very important part of this mission. One by one, Rocket, Peter, Gamora, Groot, and even Drax hop out of the ship. The silence of outer space is now replaced with the bustling sounds of a fast moving city. You follow the guardians through the park, stepping onto soft grass that squishes under your feet. You follow the guardians all the way to the edge of the park until you get a full view of the city. There are people flowing in one fluid motion, like a river. There are buildings of all different sizes and textures. There are cars zooming through the streets. The air is filled with a delicious smell of all kinds of food being cooked in the many restaurants. There is so much to see here, but you have an important job to do. Rocket steps up next to you and continues to explain your mission. 40,000 units? <laughs> the Infinity Stones are magical gems that, in the right hands, have the power to help protect the world in ways nothing else could. But in the wrong hands, those powers can be used against mankind. They need your help to find the stones and then hold them safe in your worthy hands to protect the world. You are up to the challenge because you are confident in your ability to help. Just as you are telling Rocket that you accept the mission, a tiny red and black figure lands on your shoulder. Thinking it's a bug, you twist and turn to get it off your shoulder until you hear the figure screaming something at you I'm in. and waving what look like arms high in the air. You look closer and see that it's Ant-Man. 
he landed on your shoulder while he was tiny. I ruined the moment tonight. He hops off your shoulder and bursts out to normal size. Standing before you in his red and black suit, with his silver helmet, he waves hello. His voice sounds muffled through his helmet. He came as fast as he could because he received information about where the first gem is hidden. He heard that it rests on the most beautiful, sweet-smelling flower in the city, and he knows just how to get there. He looks at you and asks, are you ready? More ready than you've ever been, you hold out your hand to grab his. He grabs your hand tightly, and in the blink of an eye, you both are teeny tiny on the cement sidewalk of this massive city. You dive into what looks like a sea of grass that is much taller than you to avoid being stepped on by the flow of people. Sitting below a canopy formed by the individual blades of grass that tower over you, Ant-Man looks at you and says, watch this. In suspense, you look around. Just then, high above you, a bright orange swirl of color blocks out the sun above you in the grass. The sky is taken over by bright orange and black butterflies that are swarming to you and Ant-Man. He has used his special powers to communicate with insects to summon butterflies that will take you both to the most beautiful, sweet-smelling flower in the entire city. A single orange and black butterfly lands gently on the grass next to you. It has a black and white spotted body with fluttering orange wings. Ant-Man waves you to hop onto the butterfly. You both are much smaller than even the butterfly, so he runs and jumps up onto the wing and reaches out his hand to help pull you up. Sitting on the spotted body of the butterfly, the orange wings begin to flap faster and faster. The butterfly is able to carry you and Ant-Man. It flutters up and up, flying through the leaves of the trees that line the park, then continuing above the heads of the flowing people. It is flying so quickly that the buildings you could once see the differing textures of are now just blurs. The motion of the butterfly's wings reminds you of the twinkling star, a continuous cycle over and over. The butterfly wings raise up gracefully into the air, then gently drape back down, up again and down again. A delicious smelling air brushes your cheeks as you enjoy the butterfly flight. The butterfly has two thin black antenna that help lead it to the best flowers. The antenna suddenly begin twitching as if they are sensing something. Then the butterfly glides into a circling turn downward. Ant-Man exclaims, we found it. Look there. He's pointing down at a beautiful red rose that stands alone on a dark green bush. The butterfly circles and circles down until it can gently land you and Ant-Man on the most beautiful red rose in the city. When it does, 
The rosy fragrance fills the air and you take a deep breath of it through your nose. Allow your chest to fill and expand like a bloom. Then, when you cannot take in any more air, slowly breathe out through your mouth. Your powerful breath out shakes the delicate rose petals like a breeze. You follow Ant-Man and hop down off of the butterfly. In the center of the rose, glistening in the sunshine, you see an even smaller than you emerald green gem. It is so small that you wonder how it holds such power. Ant-Man grabs it carefully and holds it in steady between his two gloved hands. This gem is the Time Stone. With a single command, it can completely stop, slow down, fast forward, or rewind time. What would it be like to live in slow motion? Imagine a typical activity like walking. Right foot, left foot. Right foot, left foot. Then, all of a sudden, your next step forward hovers in midair, still and hanging, until it finally reaches solid ground again. As you attempt to pick your foot back up for the next step, it is much slower than usual, lifting it off the ground, as if your foot is almost too heavy to lift. If you are the one holding the stone, you are able to continue on normally while the world is altered around you. This kind of power needs to be in capable, worthy hands. Ant-Man looks to you and holds the stone out. He wants you to keep it safe because he knows you will only use it for good. Honored, you hold out your two tiny hands and he places this shimmering stone in your upturned palms. Clasping your two hands closed around the powerful gem, you wish for the bustling sounds of the giant city to quiet. As quickly as you could wish it, the noisy city halts to silence. You and Ant-Man look around from the view of the flower at the other end of the park from where you landed the spaceship. He places his hand on yours, which is still holding the gem. In another blink of an eye, you are back to your size and in the middle of a paused, timeless city. The flow of people have stopped mid-step, with their feet stuck in mid-air. The buildings of all different sizes and textures stand resolute. Without a gentle breeze blowing in through their open windows, there are cars that look like toys that were left in place. Smoke that billows through the air now looks like clouds. You are surrounded by stillness. Let's stay here for a moment. Allow your mind to be as quiet as the city. Our minds can sometimes feel like a bustling city full of busyness and noise. With this stone, and always within your ability, you can find this stillness anytime by quieting your own mind. You can do this by bringing your attention to the center of your forehead. Imagine yourself 
brushing each thought that comes into your mind away from your forehead like you are brushing hair out of your face. Did a thought come into your mind? If so, brush it away now, gently letting it go. Take three breaths in through your nose and out through your nose and keep brushing away any thoughts that come to you. Ant-Man is so proud of you for being able to handle the power of the Time Stone. With your quieted mind, you begin walking along the sidewalk, weaving through the frozen river of people. There's a leaf paused in midair as it falls from a tree. You reach out your hand to touch the leaf. It feels crispy on your fingertips. You try to move it, gently at first, and then with all your strength, but it is immovable. You continue to walk down the sidewalk in awe with Ant-Man. You come to a corner and look down the street without any people. There's Groot stuck in place. I'm Groot. You run over to greet him, but he does not move a branch. Ant-Man explains that you have to allow time to continue on as you wished it to stop. You clasp the gem in both hands and allow the world to resume. As soon as you could wish it, it is so, and Groot excitedly shakes his branches when he sees you. Ant-Man says goodbye and thanks you again before he zooms off. You and Groot continue to stroll along the empty sidewalk. You can hardly hear the city down this quiet street. Storefronts line the street with their open windows. You look in each. There's a toy store full of fun gadgets and gizmos. You stop in front of the window to get a better look. In the reflection, you see Groot freeze in place again. Looking back, you notice the rest of the world is continuing on. What's going on? You look back at Groot, who has his eyes closed and looks like a regular tree that lines the sidewalk. I am Groot. That's when someone passes by walking a puppy. Once there are no more people around, Groot comes back to life. He says a slow, I am Groot, and you know that he is kind of afraid of people. You agree to let him know when anyone comes near so he can pretend to be a regular tree. Then continue on down the sidewalk looking into each store window. All of a sudden you feel the ground rumble behind you. You look around and do not see anything. Then you feel another rumble beneath your steps. You turn around and towering over even the tallest building in the city is the bright green hulk. Groot freezes and closes his eyes tightly as a rush of people flow by trying to get out of the way of Hulk's gargantuan steps. Hulk is far away from you at the corner you turn down, but his huge feet almost reach you. Hulk blocks out the sun for a large portion of the city, but he happily waves a giant hand hello when he sees you in his shadow. He grunts something and all you see is a Hulk hand coming down to swoop you up. He holds out his Hulk hand and you jump up. It feels like a roller coaster, 
as he swoops you up and rests you on his shoulder. The second infinity stone, called the Power Gem, is hidden way up high in a puffy cloud that hangs above the city. This Hulk heard you were here and immediately made himself larger to be able to find you so you can keep the stone safe. Up on Hulk's gigantic shoulder, the sun shines again. You look up and feel the warmth on your face. Each lumbering Hulk step sways you from side to side as he walks. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. You balance yourself on his shoulder with both hands as you are carried through the city. From up here, the bustling, noisy city sounds muffled and far away. A yellow bird flies at the height of Hulk's elbow, flapping its wings up and then down, up again and back down. You look out over the horizon and see where the busy city ends and spills out into serene greenery with a stream flowing through it. You look back up toward the shining sun and see where a group of puffy clouds are hanging around with each other. Hulk walks up to them and brushes his hand through the first one. No stone was in there. He turns to the second, and as he does, you are now fully immersed in the cloud. You can taste the misty air as Hulk looks through the second cloud, then the third. No banner, only Hulk. He turns to the last cloud. You're hopeful that the stone is here, like he thinks it is. What? And sure enough, it is. As delicately as he can, he uses his fingertips to pull out a small purple gem that glistens as he holds it up to the sunlight. It is tiny in his fingertips, but fits perfectly in your hands. You hold it tight, clasped between your two hands, and wish for all of its power. Just as quickly as you wish it, you look around and are the same exact size as the Hulk. This stone has the ability to increase physical strength and size. The Avengers world is so lucky that you now have the second Infinity Stone safe in your possession. It can only be trusted to someone with a kind, gentle heart. You were so helpful to the Avengers and the Guardians that they knew they would be able to trust you. You look your Hulk-sized eyes back toward the beautiful greenery at the edge of the city. Hulk is holding his hand out for a high five, and the slow, Hulk-sized high five you give echoes over the city like thunder. He follows you as you begin taking giant steps toward that serene place beyond the city. Once you get closer to the wilderness, you can tell that what you thought was a stream is actually a wide river, and there is a small, small to you anyway, boat floating along it. The people in the boat are nervous and scattering when you and Hulk approach. So to reassure them of your kindness, you gently pick up the boat as your regular sized self would have picked up a toy boat. You bring the boat full of people up to your eyesight and smile and wave at them. They can tell how kind you are and instantly relax. They all smile and wave excitedly back 
knowing you are keeping them safe and protected. You slowly spin around in the sunshine and the people on the boat enjoy gliding through the air in your Hulk-sized hand. Then you gently place the boat back on the river so it continue along its way. Hulk grunts and you look back toward the city in his direction. He's pointing toward the gloomy city which cannot feel the sunshine because the clouds have moved in front of it from Hulk looking for the power gem. You walk back over to the group of clouds and gently, one by one, pull them out of the way of the brightly shining sun. Beams of sunlight cover the city with warmth which, which makes you smile. To get back to your regular size, you hold the green gem between your fingertips and with a deep Hulk breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, you wish it so. With your exhale, you deflate back down to your size and you are on the soft green grass far from the noisy city. There is a tall tree to your side, the river rushing over rocks, birds chirping and soaring high above you in the sunny sky. Then you hear a psst coming from the tree. You look over and Spider-Man is hanging upside down. He leaps down with a flip rustling the leaves and lands on his feet. He runs over to you quickly and tells you that the Guardians are leaving on their spaceship right now. They were so impressed with how much you helped their world that they would like you to join them and guard the entire galaxy from evil. You are honored to be a Guardian and are confident that you will do well. You look into the sky and can see the spaceship slowly lifting up off the ground and hovering into the air above the city park. Spider-Man has just the tool to get you to the spaceship in time. He grabs your hand, points his web launching glove toward the spaceship, and he tells you to hold his hand tight. And on the count of three, you're going to jump into the air and swing by the web. One, you plant your feet into the soft earth. Two, you bend your knees to jump. And three, Spider-Man launches a web all the way to the bottom of the ship that's taking off in the distance. You swing and sail through the air by the web and get all the way to the ship. Once you arrive, you see your friend Peter, the Star-Lord, again. He pulls you up into the ship and you both say goodbye to Spider-Man. Once you're safely in the spaceship, you head to the back to rest up for your next mission as part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. If you enjoy our stories, consider becoming a member of the Honey Bee Library. Being a Honey Bee Library member gives you access to hundreds of exclusive bedtime stories not available on our podcast. The Honey Bee Library has hundreds of bedtime stories, just like this one, with new stories added every Sunday. See the description below to become a member of the Honey Bee Library. Always remember that Mr. Honey Bee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.